Well, there you have it. Uh, Among the Sleep by Crowbite Studios was fantastic. This is a marvelous game. Go out, buy this right now, play it through yourself, uh, preferably in the dark, uh, alone at night, um, and prepare to be scared. Uh, more than just that, I mean, it's just, oh, this is a phenomenally well done game. An excellent exploration of atmosphere, a great, um, uh, and, and uh, it's a great foray into visual storytelling. They used all the assets that they had at their disposal to create uh, a marvelous and psychologically engaging experience. Uh, they really focused on the story aspect and creating a compelling story and exploring those emotions, those, uh, those psychologies that, uh, that kind of haunt us all, you know. Um, absolutely love this game. It's short, but I think that that serves it. I think that um, they really uh, pushed what they, their, their concept to the limit here. They uh, they fully developed it. Um, it was a lot more than just a nice idea on Kickstarter, you know. Um, and this is so uh, fantastic to see that, uh, you know, in an age where, like, Kickstarter and video games are, are kind of, uh, not, not a joke, but, you know, there's so many failed projects on Kickstarter that never come to fruition. Um, and seeing one like this that was funded successfully and it came through successfully, the development happened, and uh, we have a, a fantastic game to show for it, is really, uh, really, um, and it gives me a lot of hope for crowdfunding. I mean, look at all the names that we have here, like, oh my god, so many people helped back this. And this is great, you know, there's a lot of things that I kind of decry about modern gaming, um, like the emphasis on, on multiplayer and, and the, the de-emphasis of story and blah blah. Um, triple A titles, you know, being pretty much the same thing turned out over and over. Um, but this right here, this wall of names that you see before you, all these people that went into funding, uh, development of Among the Sleep is fantastic. This is something that we couldn't have gotten, you know, 10 years ago. Um, and I, I'm really happy to see these systems developing and taking place that allow us, you know, allow people to, um, fun things that they're they're uh, they're interested in and also allow the developers to make things that they're interested in you know i feel like this is a concept that wouldn't have made it very far past a triple a studio um or a publisher rather if uh you know you had to explain oh well it's just a first person game that you play as a two-year-old like right there i think it'd be dead in the waters like where, where's the where's the ak-47s where's the shotguns you know where why aren't we uh where's the we need more jump scares you know um but here we have an example of the crowdfunding system working as it's meant to. You know, you have a, a unique idea and you have the people that are interested in that idea coming around and showing their support in order to bring it into reality. And this is fantastic. Um, I mean, uh, I, I also like that, again, I attribute this a lot to, the, to its independent nature. Um, it doesn't really pull any punches, you know, um, it, and it kind of uh, upsets the status quo. Uh, realistically, I knew a little bit about the story going into this, but um, if, if you go into this totally fresh and clean, which I recommend that you do, which granted you've been doing that because this is the end of a, a gameplay series, but, uh, you know, put it aside and, and play it again in a couple years, and I feel like you're going to get a totally new experience out of it um, because it really does work on that that uh, that psychological level that you know, kind of uh, kind of exploring what makes you tick, you know. But uh, the fundamental story of what's happening here, uh, let me go ahead and praise it first of all for actually having a story. Uh, I really really like Dear Esther, and I think that it's open to a lot of interpretation. But some people would say that it's kind of a cop out if you don't have a very clearly defined plot and story, you know, to where it's just oh here's a bunch of you know words and images, and make of it what you will. Here, we definitely have a very definite story, and that's that's bold, you know, to say, hey, this is, this is what's going on in this kid's world. Um, so that that's already a you know, gold star for these guys. Another gold star is the fact that, as I said, it's a very uncompromising story. You know, it's it shows a really ugly aspect of life that, that many, uh, I mean, unfortunately, many families still deal with, many children still deal with. Um, and also for not being a, a you know a very predictable story of that um you know we get very early on this this concept of these bottles you know there's something wrong with, with drinking and alcohol but our first experience with mom is she's loving and caring and dad's not in her life he's the missing uh, component and 
I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I, I, I felt like they're, they were painting kind of a sinister picture for Dad, you know? Like, um, is, is he the, the entity that took away Mom? Like, what, what's going on? Is he, like, the drunk? Is that why we're divorced? Um, but then they switch it on us at the end there. You know, we see that it was Mom that had the, the problem, and Dad's kind of the savior here, which is very, very uncommon. In real life, as well as uh, in media portrayals, you know. Um, again, not to to wax poetic about my own experiences, but um, I come from a broken home, and uh, it was uh, a very similar uh, situation to this. Um, uh, and unfortunately, there well, unfortunately, unfortunately, um, there was no uh, substance abuse, and. Uh, as a result, you know, the, just the way the American legal system works, if you can't, like, legitimately prove um, substance abuse or some other major uh, major violation of, you know, parental responsibility, then usually the mom is going to get custody, regardless of whether she's psychologically fit and stable to do that, you know. Um, I mean, this is a, a, a really, uh, it's a personal story. And I don't feel like it's trying to get involved in the politics of like, oh, you know, it, um, is it fair that uh, that mothers traditionally get the uh, um, custody of child in, in split battles? I don't think it's really raising those questions. I think that this is telling a very personal story to this one particular family. Um, and it's interesting that it ends on that kind of hopeful note. Um, I, I appreciate that, actually. You know, that the kid gets reunited with his dad and he's... You know, his dad's going to uh, put back the, the teddy bear and hopefully put back the pieces of life, you know, whether or not that actually turns out to be the case. Um, you know, speaking of horror, I, I, I'm i not always opposed to bad endings or sad endings. You know, I don't need a happy ending every time. I think a lot of times, you know, it would be much more effective if we didn't get that happy ending. But here is a place where I felt like it really worked. I mean, we're a two-year-old. We're a child that's just getting started in life. And if we ended this game with a sense of hopelessness, man, I, I, I just think that would be too depressing. I don't think it would serve any real purpose. Um, but this game is showing kind of, you know, I, I think it's a metaphor for, you know, navigating those dark corners of our lives and finding the brightness at the end of the tunnel, you know? Oh, Grant, that's pretty pretentious of me to say that. I recognize that. <laughs> I'm <not> like, <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Still getting over, uh, still getting over the flu. Um. And of course, screaming my head off, uh, it probably didn't help that out any, but, uh, oh man, it was quite a rush, quite a rush. Uh, and I'm, again, I just, I just keep on going back to the developers, Crowbyte Studios, and, uh, the supporters, um, such a fantastic dynamic there, that, uh, these developers went in, and, like, I feel like they really and truly, um, fully explored this concept. And uh, they, they really gave everything they had to it. I didn't feel like any of this was phoned in, you know. Um, uh, who was it? Christopher Nolan said that, you know, the only thing he looks for, Christopher Nolan is the director of uh, Inception and the Dark Knight trilogy, etc. Um, he says that the only thing he looks for when he goes to the theater is the sense that every single person involved on the production felt like this was the best movie ever, you know. Regardless of the writing, regardless of how it actually turned out, the fact that they believed in it, and they gave it everything they had. Um, and I feel like that absolutely describes Among the Sleep. I, I totally get the impression that uh, Grillbite and uh, um, all, of its, all of its employees really brought everything they had to this project. And I really, really want to see more coming from them. Uh, I need to do some research. I mean, I'm sure, like, uh, they've got to be up to something else by now, right? You know, there's got to be another Kickstarter or something, which I just desperately need to go find. I wish I had funded this game. You know, this is the kind of thing that's like, all right, I want on my tombstone. Uh, <laughs> he donated to the Kickstarter for Among the Sleep. Um, yeah, I, I really, really appreciate this kind of storytelling. It gives me a lot of hope for the future going forward, you know, um, as far as the indie, indie development scene. Um, I'm, I'm in a weird place. Uh, I, don't, I don't consider myself super hipster. But, uh, the independent game scene is, I mean, it's, it's a varied landscape, and that's a good thing. There's a lot of diversity, you know? It's not like all indie games have all these traits and qualities. 
Um, but as a result, sometimes, you know, some of them click with you, some of them don't, you know. A lot of great indie games um, are really, uh, they're really carried forward by their gameplay. Like Braid, uh, Fez, uh, Super Meat Boy. You know, these are games that, um, now, well, arguably Braid actually does a lot with narrative as well, which is why I really appreciate it. But, but let's take something like Fez, um, where the story kind of takes a backseat to the gameplay. Um, it's just a really neat concept, you know, navigating these 2D, these 3D environments in two dimensions um, is what makes Fez so interesting. Um, but we don't really get a whole lot of emotional depth or, or um, you know, avant-garde storytelling in that form. Um, and I've seen that in, in a lot of indie games, where it's like, hey, I've got this really cool idea for a game, and it is a super cool idea for a game. It's a, it's a ton of fun gameplay. But I don't walk away from it, you know, with like a life-changing story. Um, this is kind of an inverse of that trope among the sleep is. It's, uh, I mean, the, the gameplay mechanics themselves aren't wildly inventive. It's not like it's something that we've never seen before. We have some pretty basic physics puzzles, um, and for the most part, it's it's a, a lot of just exploring and walking, you know. Um, but the story that they tell through that, through these relatively simple mechanics, is uh, is really gripping. It's, it's um, I, I would compare this to something like The Unfinished Swan uh, for PlayStation 3, which is also another fantastic game. I highly recommend you, you go play it. Um, uh, but again, I'd actually kind of hold this above The Unfinished Swan because, like I said, it does have a very clear and definite story that it's trying to tell. The Unfinished Swan is wild and whimsical and fun and it's got tons of unique gameplay elements but um but it's not totally clear what what the story they're trying to tell is you know uh at the end there's still a lot of questions that are kind of unanswered um and i, I think it's important that we have these uh these moments these games that that say hey you can actually answer questions and come up with a satisfying conclusion i mean this is kind of like uh, comparing uh lost and breaking bad right uh, Lost is uh, kind of infamous for having um, uh, just a ton of unanswered questions. Um, whereas Breaking Bad is a, is a story that, that wraps up in, in one nice little neat little bow at the end. Pretty much everybody's taken care of. Um, I'm not against ambiguity in storytelling, but uh, but I, I think that Among the Sleep proves that you can tell a really tight story and get something really effective out of it. Please go buy this game. Please support any game you see by this developer.